Brett, Ian and Chris are on an ambitious journey to grow their financial planning businesses. But their plans will come under razor-sharp scrutiny from a panel of industry heavy hitters on Judgment Day. To answer the ultimate question, would you buy my business? I think Brett and Ian have got a great idea, so really keen to see how they're going to be able to turn that into reality. I think I was uh, on the record as saying that I thought that their business was way too diverse, and I still think that. I think Chris is a very interesting business model. He's an interesting business operator. He's a young bloke with great ambitions, great ideas. But what's next? Being able to, to sell off a, a book of clients and focus on his core ideal clients and uh, power his business growth is a, is a really good sign that he He's ready to keep going, ready to keep growing. To make sure they're ready for the biggest test of their business lives, we've teamed them up with Uber mentors, Robbie Bennett and Barry Lambert. It's yeah. very important you spend those resources on people are gonna generate some income for you. Yes. You've gotta be brutally honest with yourselves yeah. with that, brutal. So you've got a million dollar debt with 1.2 million revenue and you wanna borrow $10 million? Yes. I'll tell you what, mate, you wanna keep in good with your wife. In this episode of No More Practice, we're taking a long, hard look at the numbers. Welcome to No More Practice, Series 3. Financial planner Chris Brown, the founder of Financial Design for Life, has told mentors Barry and Robbie that he plans to sell a parcel of clients. He wants to reinvest the capital from the sale to buy a new set of clients that better fit his business model. Perhaps uh, because of the debt and, and uh, that business and get somebody to have a look at the, the, the accounting. Barry thinks Chris might be taking on too much debt. So today, Chris is meeting Terry Slattery. Terry heads up the forensic accounting and business valuations practice at DFK. Terry and Chris will take a long, hard look at the figures to make sure the plan stacks up. Terry, um, you're probably aware, but I'm trying to sell a parcel of clients, some C's and D's, and uh, it's about $150,000 worth of revenue. And we're just trying to find a home um, so we can inject a bit of capital into our business so we can make a future acquisition. Um, but we can also give an opportunity to a young advisor trying to gain equity in a larger practice or just trying to start out by themselves. It throws up uh, a couple of issues, uh, Chris. Um, first one would be, um, what do you want for this parcel of fees mm. in terms of you know, a price and therefore what are they really worth? What I find also interesting is that it's a little bit more than you just selling it to, to anybody. Mm. You know, well, from what you've said to me, you know, like it seems important to some extent where you place it. But it does go a little bit down the road of you having to maybe compromise on what you could get for it. That's right. And so value becomes a very interesting concept too in the sense that a range of different purchases can have different concepts of what your $160,000 worth of fees are worth. Mm. I mean, if someone was to buy them and basically try and run their own standalone practice, mm. well, it's worth an enormous amount less mm. than if I have my existing practice and I simply just slot your 160,000 fees on top of my existing cost structure. Mm. So it's, it's always useful um, from the point of view of you, the vendor, you know, having an appreciation of who you're selling to and potentially you know, the metrics that are running around in the back of their mind as to what it could be worth. Terry's first piece of advice, the value of your business will be dependent on the buyer's business model. The other thing that it threw up though is that there's obviously a repositioning going on uh, strategically inside your firm. Um, and the little bit of research I've done would suggest that um, you're really pushing hard into this Gen X and Gen Y space. Mm. Um, and I'm just a little bit interested as to... Why? Yeah, why? Yeah, look, one, simply, I'm in that space. I've got two young children, I've got a lot of debt. I can really empathise with young families. I know what they're going through and I know the hot topics. Um, and that's a lot easier to do for me than sitting down with a pre-retiree or retiree and having a conversation about Centrelink or the thoughts of not going to work anymore. I just, I, I, I don't get that. I love your answer um, and I'll tell you why, mm. um, is that when I did some homework on your business, mm. I was attempting to understand what the fundamental business strategy was and what it was about your business that would make it maybe a little bit different to your competitors. Mm. And what I came up with was that um, yours is what I call a strategy of association. You know, you're basically aligning 
yourself and the values that matter to you with your client base. Sure. You know, don't, don't be something that you're not. Yeah. You're going to spend half your life at work as a minimum. 50% of your waking hours you're going to be at work so you damn well better enjoy it and you look as though you're excited about what you do. Yeah. You know, you've got a passion, I can, see, I can just see the passion in you, you know, for what you do. I think that's marvellous and I think you'll be successful. Terry's second piece of advice is to develop a strategy of association. Match your business to the values of you and your clients. Terry got Chris to justify his choice of buyer and his thoughts around his client base and he's added two key bits of advice. General insurance businesses. Terry's advice to Chris was firstly the value of your business would be dependent on the buyer's business model. Second, develop a strategy of association and match your business to the values of you and your clients. Brett and Ian have almost finalised a deal to inject $1 million into their company. If their deal is successful, they can build up their IT infrastructure and bring a marketing expert on board. When they met with mentor Robbie Bennett, he suggested someone to be their final advisor. Uh, but perhaps as well, you could go and see a guy called Paul Barrett. Paul's with ANZ, but I've known Paul for many, many years, and uh, uh, that's another external person that can have a good look at it. And he's been involved with lots of uh, mergers and acquisitions over the years, so probably have a fair bit of you know, valuable feedback that he could offer to you as well. Great, thank you. Paul Barrett is the General Manager of Advice and Distribution at ANZ. He is responsible for all ANZ's financial planner and advice distribution network, including aligned dealer groups. And so on the eve of probably the uh, greatest sort of reform we've seen in financial planning services, you're um, asking Santa for debt. Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Don't squander the debt. Use it really wisely. So, so how do you intend to use the debt? So what, what sort of things are you going to do with the funding? The, the, there's two main um, targets initially. Um, yep. the, the first one is to uh, complete a, a software program that we've, we've been working on for the right. last two and a half years. That effectively integrates a number of different um, planning elements. Yep. Uh, the, the second one is for, um, for marketing and really focusing on uh, different marketing to those specific channels. Right. Just on the marketing front, exactly what sort of marketing do you want to do? One of our channels is to the corporates, so we have exclusive arrangements with a number of corporates where we provide our services as a, an employee benefit. Right. So is the technology spend that you're about to make going to make it easier for your firm to link those different parts together and to cross-refer and cross-advise? Uh, Definitely. Okay. I'm still a little nervous about your technology mm. play. Um, I don't know enough about it. Because uh, technology uh, isn't just a case of build it and then walk away. Technology is a case of build it and keep investing in it. If you make a call to become a technology company, that's, that's a different pathway altogether. Mm. I don't think you're saying that. I think you're just saying you're investing in an application to help you do some things, but um, that one's the only thing that makes me nervous. Paul's first piece of advice? Don't squander the debt and don't overinvest in technology. What is the end game? What are you trying to achieve in the long run? Mm. Uh, and do you have a... Uh, are you starting to think yet about succession planning and how, how you might uh, actually get some value out of... Your firm. You're too young to have this conversation? Definitely too young. <laughs> so uh, Brett and I, we're going to be around for, for quite yeah. a while and we actually really enjoy what we do. So yeah. that's, it's kind of comfortting for me to know that you know, this is where I want to be. Yeah. And um, the question for the successes is, you know, can they afford to buy uh, your business and how do you bring them on that journey sooner rather than later? And I suppose that's why I don't think it's ever too early to start planning for this. One of the things I see every day in the networks that I run is planners talking about succession planning when it's far too late. Paul's second piece of advice, it's never too early to think about succession planning. What, what, sort, what sort of plan of attack would you be suggesting, given three years is you know, a mile away? Yep. What sort, what sort of options would you see at that point? Um, look, I mean, institutional partnership is, is clearly an option. Um, and you know, that's up to you in terms of your views on the value that a partner adds. But if, if, you want to f if you want to form a partnership with an institution, the institution can't be a passive shareholder in my view. The institution's got to be able to demonstrate and add value. Yes. There's got to be a, uh, you know, a, a genuine intent on both parts of the transaction to support one another. Yes. So that would be something that I would advise you pay careful attention to and what, what the motives of the institution are. Uh, but there are going to be in three years time 
I think the value proposition that firms like ours will offer will change dramatically over the next yeah. two or three years, particularly because of um, you know, the changing regulation. A good example would be around efficiency of the back office. You know, we need to invest in technology and we need to make that technology investment available to firms like yours to enable you to not just lower costs and improve efficiency, but to provide a much better level of service to your clients in a, in a faithful world. So these are the sorts of things that I would be, if I was in your shoes, talking to institutions about. Not just financing the next part of your expansion, but how can you add value around things like, for example, you know, phone-based advice or mm. delivering you know, integrated uh, software. Ironically, the very thing that you are trying to invest in to achieve yourself. Paul's third piece of advice is to make sure institutional partners can add value where you can't. Paul has given Ian some serious food for thought. Don't squander the debt and don't overinvest in technology. It's never too early to think about succession planning and make sure institutional partners can add value where you can't. Chris now gets his chance to meet with Paul. The challenge for the industry is how do we get consumers to pay what financial planning advice is really worth? Hi, Ian. Nice to meet While you. Ian well, goes head to head with Terry Slattery. I mean, I've seen some of your numbers and you know, your projections look very impressive, but I haven't seen you know, the underlying cash flow. Next time on No More Practice, Judgment Day. If you would like to meet the experts in this show, go to our website, nomorepractice.com.au and click on the Live Event tab to register for our No More Practice Live Event. You can view the experts' profiles prior to the event under the Marketplace tab.